All right, welcome back. Today we are continuing our RBT exam series where we're going through an entire full length RBT exam, question by question. I'm breaking down every single question step by step and explaining to you how I think you should think about it and what I think is going to give you the best chance to pass on your test day. So if you're enjoying my videos, please like and subscribe. That really helps me. I appreciate it. I can keep putting out these videos, these practice exams. Um, if you do need our study materials, please check out our website, rbtexamreview.com, or one of these links, which I will put in the comments and descriptions below. Uh, we offer two practice exams, a study guide, our combo pack comes with everything, including flashcards, or you can get the competency study guide for when you take your initial competency or your reassessment, which you have to do every year. Other than that, uh, any questions, email me, leave a comment below. I'm happy to help. Um, keep studying hard and uh, let's get into it. All right. Question 51, you're working with a client in home. Your client's grandma and grandpa live with the family and your client has a very good relationship with their grandparents. One day the grandma gets sick and is admitted to the hospital. What should you do? So this is an ethics question. Okay, it's a service delivery question. It's asking you what you should do in your role as an RBT. Okay, so when you're thinking about ethics questions, we want a strong answer, but we don't want an answer that's too strong, that's too over the top. Okay, so it's a balance with ethics where it's a common sense answer that's strong, but not too strong. Okay, we don't wanna go over the top. We just wanna do what's necessary. Okay, so in this case, something in the environment has changed, a variable has changed, which could impact our client's behavior or any number of, of, of things, right? So what should you do as the RBT is the question. A, give your client two weeks off out of respect for the family. Well, your, your family may ask for, for time off, okay? But this isn't for you to decide, okay? This is gonna be between the family, the company, the BCBA. The family might wanna continue services to maintain some normalcy. You just don't know how they're gonna to react to the situation. But just giving the client two weeks off just immediately is too strong. Okay, it's one of those two strong answers, right? We need to be sympathetic. We need to be empathetic. We need to understand what they're going through, okay? But we also still need to continue to provide services as needed, okay? So A is too strong. B, nothing. Continue running your sessions as usual. So this is half right. You should continue running your sessions as usual, okay? You should continue implementing behavior plans and skill acquisition plans. However, nothing is wrong. There is something you should be doing, okay? So B is wrong. C, visit your client on your off days for extra support. As nice as this is, you still need to be careful about avoiding dual relationships, okay? You can't cross that boundary from professional to personal, regardless of the situation. You might be extremely close with the family, but you still are there in a professional capacity and visiting on your off days, okay, is crossing the line. So C is too much. So that leaves us with D, okay? Report this to your BCBA and make a note of it in your session notes. Yes, okay. A variable has changed that could impact our client. This needs to be told to the BCBA. Anytime there is a change that can impact the client, it needs to be reported, it needs to be recorded. The reason is if we go back, okay, and we look at this particular week and we see a bunch of behavior change, we can start to attribute it to some of these causes, right? Maybe grandma being in the hospital had nothing to do with it, but maybe it did. Maybe it caused a spike in behavior. The only way we'll know, okay, that this week grandma was in the hospital is if we make note of it. And that's why it's important, okay? So you should continue your sessions, right? But you need to report it to your BCBA. And this goes for all variables that change. Are parents having difficulty in their marriage or is the client having trouble sleeping? Are there problems at school? Did the client get new medication? All these variables that can affect your client need to be recorded in your session notes, okay, for further future use. Okay, so the answer is D. 52, select the best definition for differential reinforcement from the choices below. So this is a question testing your knowledge of terms, of definitions, of very important terms, okay, that you need to know as an RBT. So this question can go one of two ways. 
it can be either very easy or very challenging. If you've done your flashcards, if you've done your study guide, this should be a very, very easy question. If you haven't, this question could be more difficult, okay? All it is is a definition question, all right? So what is the best definition for differential reinforcement? A, a stimulus that when presented following a behavior causes an overall decrease in that behavior over time. So what is this? Presenting a stimulus that causes a decrease, that of course is punishment. B, a stimulus that when presented following a BX causes an overall increase in that BX over time. What is this? We're presenting something following a behavior that increases the behavior. That, of course, is reinforcement. Okay, But it's not what? It's not differential reinforcement. It's simply reinforcement. C, a stimulus change that signals the availability of a reinforcer. What tells us that a reinforcer is available? What signals the reinforcer is available? That is a discriminative stimuli or an SD. That leaves us with D, providing greater reinforcement for better approximations of target behavior and placing other behaviors on extinction. That's it. That's exactly right, right? We're reinforcing one behavior. We're putting other behaviors on extinction. Differential reinforcement is a fundamental aspect of behavior change. Again, this question you should do in 15 seconds. If you can't do this question quick, you don't know your terms and definitions well enough, okay? You need to go back, do some flashcards, do some fluency drills, okay? And really, really hammer home, okay, terms and definitions. It's gonna make the, the exam easier, I promise. All right, 53, which of the following is known as the ordinate? All right, what kind of question is this? This is a graphing question, okay? You can tell from the question, the ordinate is on a line graph or the answer choices. We have condition change lines, y-axis, baseline, and x-axis. They might ask you the fancy name for the y-axis and the x-axis, okay? So this is just kind of, a, again, a term or definition question, right? This question does come up. I've seen it many, many times with my students, okay? They ask them, what is an abscissa or what is an ordinate? And you just have to know it, okay? So which of the following is known as the ordinate? That is the y-axis. Okay, 54, back to it. Whenever your client wants to get up from the table, they will bang their fists and scream. Your BCBA decides it's time to intervene on this behavior. You and the BCBA collaborate on a treatment plan. Before implementation, your BCBA advises the parents that the client might bang their fists harder and scream louder at first. What is your BCBA referring to? So what kind of question is this? This is a behavior question, okay? We're looking at behavior. We're looking at behavior change and your BCBA is explaining to your parents part of what might occur during our behavior change. So what is our BCBA referring to when they say that the client's behavior might increase? Their fist might bang harder, they might scream louder as we're implementing extinction, okay? So what is this called? Is it an extinction burst? Is it punishment-induced aggression? Is it resistance to punishment? or is it an unintended side effect of extinction, okay? Well, we're not punishing in this situation, right? Because we're, we're intervening on the behavior and punishment is never our first step, okay? You always try reinforcement and extinction for punishment. So B and C are out. So what is it? Is it an extinction burst or is it an unintended side effect of extinction? Well, a temporary increase in behavior for a behavior that was just put on extinction. Is that an unintended side effect or is that a side effect we can anticipate and that we expect? That is something we anticipate and we expect. Remember, when we first put behavior on extinction, we are expecting that that behavior increases at first, okay? And by telling the client we're being ethical in our treatment, okay? So our BCBA advising the parent that the client might bang their fist and scream louder at first, okay? Our BCBA is referring to the extinction burst, okay? This is a difficult question, right? Um, so if you don't understand how we got to extinction burst, read it a few times, okay? And think about what we're looking at. We're intervening, intervening on a behavior, okay? The behavior might temporarily increase, okay? When we start implementation, and our BCBA warns the parents about this, okay? That has to be an extinction burst. Extinction bursts, extinction bursts are not unintended, okay? 
They're fully anticipated. We expect them to happen. Okay, 55. Which of the following best describes response latency? Again, terms and definition question. I really wanted to test your guys um, or y'all's knowledge of the terms and definitions this week, okay? Because I think people often overlook the importance of just knowing the terminology and how much easier the test gets when you know the terminology. Here's the thing about knowing the terminology is the questions become much easier because you're not spending time figuring out what the words mean, right? You're just reading the question for the question, okay? So I can't stress enough how important it is to know your terms, know your definitions. All right, so which of the following best describes response latency? What is response latency? Think to yourself, what is response latency? It's at the time between the waiter asking you what you would like to order and you completing your order, the time between the waiter asking you what you would like to order and you starting to tell the waiter your order, the time in between you sitting down for dinner and then leaving for dinner, or the time in between the bites of food once you receive your order. So let's start with D. The time in between bites of food, okay, is what, right? The time in between two similar responses is called what? Well, that is our inter-response time, right? The time between bites one and two, the time between bites two and three, three and four, four and five, et cetera, is inter-response time. So D is out. C, the time in between you sitting down for dinner and then leaving for dinner, what are we measuring there, okay? We sit down. Okay, we eat our dinner and then we leave. Well, that is the duration of dinner, right? That is, we're measuring one response, okay? How long did dinner take, right? Is our duration. C is out. B, the time between the waiter asking you what you would like to order and you starting to tell the waiter your order. This looks pretty good, right? What is latency, right? It's the, it's the presentation of the SD, okay? The presentation of the instruction, all right? The time between the SD and the start of the response. That is latency, okay? So your waiter asks you what you would like to order. The time between that question and you starting to tell the waiter your order is latency. So what's wrong with A? I wanted to save A for last. What's wrong with A? The time between the waiter asking you what you would like to order and you completing your order. Latency doesn't measure, okay, from the SD to the end of the response. Latency measures from the SD to the start of the response, okay? This is a great, great question. I could see this question being on the exam, okay? Excellent question. It tests your knowledge of IRT. It tests your knowledge of duration. And then it definitely tests your knowledge of latency, okay? Because you really need to know the specifics of latency to pick B over A. Because A looks pretty good too, right? It's the time between the SD and the response, but A is the end of the response. B is the beginning. And latency is from the SD to the beginning of the response, okay? Great question. Make sure you understand 55. 56, Tammy wants to go to a party this weekend. Her mom tells Tiffany that if her homework is done when mom gets home from work, she is allowed to go to the party. What would be the best way for mom to measure this goal? All right, careful here, okay? What are we looking at, right? Well, the contingency is if Tiffany's homework is done, she can go to the party. So how would mom measure this goal if mom is at work, okay? Mom gets home from work, right? And then she wants to measure it. So think about it. Is mom observing this behavior? No, right? Tiffany is just responsible for doing her homework while mom is gone. So how is mom gonna measure this? Frequency count of how many problems Tammy does. Well, what does frequency require? Frequency re requires us to be there in person, okay? event recording, we have to be there to watch the behavior happen. Mom is at work. She can't watch the behavior happen, okay? So A is out. B, setting up cameras to record Tammy completing her homework. All right, careful, careful, right? B is correct if, if there isn't a better answer, okay? And that's important on the RBT exam. We're looking for the best answer, right? So B, setting up cameras to record Tammy completing her homework. Yes, mom could do this, all right, but it's a little extreme, okay, when there's an easier, simpler method, right, to recording the homework is done. So B is correct if there isn't a better answer. Let's keep reading. C, permanent product. Yes, right, mom can come home, she can look at Tiffany's math homework and see if it's done or not, 
without having to watch the behavior, okay? The behavior of doing the homework produced the product of the homework and mom measured it through permanent product. C is better than B, it's simpler, okay? It's more low tech, okay? It's way easier to do. Again, B is correct if C is not here, which is why you need to always read every answer choice on the test before giving your answer, okay? Because you might, A might look great, but C is better, right? Always read all the answer choices, even if you immediately think you know the answer. And then D, event recording is the same as frequency. Of course, we have to be there in person, okay? So the best way for mom to measure Tammy completing her homework is permanent product. 57, each month an RBT must receive supervision of blank of their hours spent providing services. Okay, so the BACB board wants to make sure you understand the requirements of maintaining your RBT um, license, okay? So what are the requirements? Well, you have to receive supervision monthly, okay? You have to retake your competency exam, okay? Every year, you have to renew your RBT. You have to redo your competency, which is why I suggest you check out my video and my study guide, okay? Because you're gonna have to do that again every year. And then how much supervision must, must you receive monthly of hours spent providing services? Is it 15%, 2%, 5%, or 10%? So the answer is 5%, something you just need to know. And the key is here, spent providing services, okay? So team meetings or work meetings or whatever else you're doing, okay? They don't count, right? Only the hours spent doing services. So if you provide 100 hours of service in a month, you need five hours of supervision from a BCBA, okay? So, you know, not a hard question, something you have to know for the test. They wanna know that you know, how do you maintain your RBT and how do you stay in good standing as an RBT? 58, Bill, a fifth grade special education teacher brings in a bowl of candy for his students. He tells the students they must first complete their quizzes before they, allowed, they are allowed to eat their candy. What is Bill implementing? All right, good question, okay? Do you know your terms, okay? What are we asking here? We're asking what is Bill implementing? What procedure is Bill implementing? He says, if you do your quizzes, then you eat your candy. What is that? What is an if-then statement? Is it a contingency? Is it incidental teaching? Is it DTT or is it prompting, okay? So this is actually called a group contingency, okay? For the RBT exam, you don't necessarily need to know that, right? But a group contingency is a contingency put in place um, for, a, for a larger group rather than just one client, okay? So you have dependent contingencies, right? You have independent contingencies, okay? Simply put though, what you need to know is this is a contingency, an if-then statement. If you do this, then you get this. First you do this, then you get this. First you do your quiz, then you eat their candy. Bill is implementing a contingency. It's not a prompt, right? It's not a prompt to do, do their quizzes. Okay, there's no prompts involved, okay? Bill is just setting up the contingency. It's not DTT, right? Because there's not a bunch of trials happening, right? There's no clear beginning and end, right? It's simply a group contingency, okay? for completing their quizzes, then they're allowed to eat their candy. And then incidental teaching is naturalistic teaching, okay? Where you're looking for natural opportunities to reinforce. Bill is contriving this opportunity, okay? He set this up with his own contingency, okay? So the answer here is a contingency. Good question. Make sure you understand what a contingency is. As an RBT, you should be implementing contingencies constantly, okay? A contingency is an if-then statement, right? If you do this, then you do this. First you do this, then you get this. 59, what of the following is the best example of imitation? Imitation, very easy, but very misunderstood. Imitation, okay, is the direct copying, okay, of somebody else's actions, right? With no verbal SD, with no prompts, okay? And immediately, so imitation occurs immediately. Okay, so which of the following is the best example of that? Yesterday, you read morning announcements. Today, Kevin reads morning announcements. Is Kevin imitating you? No, okay. 
a lot of things happen between you reading the announcements and Kevin reading the announcements, okay? There's no imitation going on here, right? We don't even know if Kevin saw you reading the announcements, okay? Maybe you just swap out jobs, right? That's Kevin's job today. Yesterday was your job. Imitation needs to be immediate, okay? So A is out. B, you tell your client say blue and your client says blue. A lot of people want to pick this question because they think it's imitation. But are they imitating, right? Or are they just responding to the SD, right? This is an imitation, okay? Because you're telling them to say something and then they say it, okay? Imitation is just watching someone else do something, okay? And doing that with no verbal SD, okay? There's no copy me. True imitation, okay? You're not saying copy me. There's no SD. The SD is the action, basically. Okay, the SD for imitation is just a thing you're imitating, right? So if I say copy me and I pat my head, the SD is, is copy me, right? If I just pat my head and then you pat your head, that's true imitation, okay? So remember that, right? Imitation, we're looking for a nonverbal action, okay? At 8 a.m., you and your roommates leave for your class. It starts at 9 a.m. No, right? Um, 8 a.m. is just the SD, okay, to get to class on time. D, you prepare a special meal by pulling up a YouTube video and copying the cooking instructor's actions. Yes, right? You watching the video and copying the actions, okay, this is imitation, right? As they're doing uh, each step, each step is the SD for imitation, okay? They're not telling you, right? Okay, now you have to copy. They're not saying nobody told you copy the video, okay? You just imitated the video. You imitated the actions, okay? This is a tricky imitation question, okay? It might be more than you need to know um, for the RBT exam. However, I don't want you to get caught with imitation, okay? Because I don't want you to answer B as imitation, okay? Telling someone to do something and then, then them doing it is not imitation. Saying copy me and then them copying you is not imitation, okay? Telling them to do something is not imitation, right? They just need to copy it, okay? No verbal SD, all right? So D, you prepare a special meal by pulling up a YouTube video and copying the cooking instructor's actions. And finally, 60, differential reinforcement leads to what? All right, so what does differential reinforcement lead to? It leads to two things, okay? Does it lead to discrimination, prompting, incidental teaching, or shaping? Well, Differential reinforcement doesn't lead to shaping, okay? We, we use differential reinforcement and we shape, right? We're putting one behavior on extinction and reinforcing another, but differential reinforcement doesn't lead to shaping. Prompting is just wrong, okay? Incidental teaching, right? Again, is naturalistic teaching, okay? So differential reinforcement doesn't lead to incidental teaching. Um, incident, incidental teaching is just a type of teaching, okay? So differential reinforcement leads to what? Differential reinforcement leads to discrimination <clears throat> and it leads to differentiation, okay? So how does it lead to discrimination? Well, remember, differential reinforcement, we're reinforcing one response and putting other responses on extinction. So if I reinforce the response of touching green in the presence of green, okay, I'm teaching the client to discriminate between green and other colors, okay? The differential reinforcement leads to discrimination. All right. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, we're going to be back next week with uh, the next 10 questions. As always, another video is coming Wednesday and Friday. Okay. Um, so like and subscribe. Any questions, leave a comment below, right? Or email me. Uh, check out our website for all our study materials. Keep studying hard. Okay. It's going to pay off. I promise you. Um, don't give up. Don't give up. Learn those terms. Learn those definitions. Um, you can pass. The test isn't as hard as you think it might be, okay? So keep studying hard, and I will see you soon.